So, oh no. This is my You've already days. facilitated this. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you are a nimble. Is that Katie? Yes. Hey. Oh, hi. Katie. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I think we'll give it one more minute just to allow folks to join. Um, we'll start probably right at 10.05. Thank you for waiting in the waiting room. And as you can see, we have this lovely uh, presentation in front of us. It's wonderful stock slides. So just enjoy. <laughs> if you'd like in the chat, if you'd like to uh, go ahead and start uh, just introducing yourself uh, by maybe entering your name, uh, you, where, what organization you're affiliated with and where you're coming to us from, that would be great. And we'll get started right now. Okay, <laughs> it's, it's, it is 10.05. All right, well, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining uh, SID's Inclusive Development Working Group, our 2021 planning meeting. Uh, my name is Ryan Ubuntu Olson, and my co-chair is Kaylin Sullivan Flurry. We'll introduce ourselves again in just a little bit. Um, just so everyone is aware, this session is being recorded and will be put on YouTube for the whole world to see. So just FYI, um, thank you for um, being here. Um, I just want to, we also just want to recognize that uh, today we will have an opportunity to explore a wide range of ideas, approaches, methodologies, um, and just opportunities for all of us to kind of share our expertise and, and the things that we're excited about. Um, so let's recognize uh, that this, we're hoping to create a safe space and, uh, uh, and making sure that whatever we say, how we say it, uh, we're being as respectful um, and kind as we can uh, and um, most of all, we want to thank uh, our SID team, particularly our fearless leader, Paul, for helping to set this up uh, and coordinating this. Um, so uh, welcome. And again, my name is Ryan Ubuntu Olson. Uh, uh, if we want to go to the next slide, I think. Um, 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 my name is Ryan Ubuntu Olson, and I'm a technical advisor at Palladium. I am thrilled to be a co-chair of this wonderful uh, working group that I hope will have an impact uh, throughout the next few years. Uh, and Kaylin, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Kaylin Sullivan Flurry. I am uh, the co chair of this uh, work group. And I'm really excited about today's planning meeting and to meet uh, some of you virtually and also see some contacts I haven't seen in a while. Um, and I am a gender and social inclusion senior specialist at Chemonix International. So looking forward to working with you all today. And Kayla, it looks like we've got a great crowd today. We've got uh, some folks from Encompass, Katie Chenny, our former co-chair, yay. Uh, Caitlin O'Donnell uh, from Making Sense International and our, on our TAP tool team, woohoo. Um, Karine Lapillez, uh, Inclusive Societies, Maryland, Jeremy Anderson, a master's student at American University, one of my favorite places, Chris Light, Digital Development Working Group Chair. Oh, thank you for joining us, Chris, and Amy Chase, yay, a former chair uh, and fellow Palladium colleague, Denise, former chair as well, now working at Pangora Group as a training and capacity building specialist. Well, welcome to everyone here. Thank you so much. Oh, and Eno from Tetro Tech. So thank you. Wonderful. Should we go into the agenda, Ryan, or? Yeah, well, I just, um, I had a quick question for you. So um, yeah. just to give a little bit more background on why we're here, what, what brought you to the working group? Why, why are you excited to be the co-chair specifically? It's a great question. Um, so I, I think I, what I'm most excited about, I'm sure like a lot of you, 2020 made me feel a bit more isolated from some of the other individuals working in our industry and in the inclusion space. And I think I'm really looking forward to the chance to build more connections and um, learn more about what each of you are doing um, in your work and hopefully share some of what I'm, I'm doing as well that's useful. So I think what I'm, I'm most looking forward to is the, the connections and the network um, of people who are all committed to inclusive development. What about you, Ryan? 
Uh, no, well, I, I, I feel like we're kindred spirits and most, more than anything, I'm, I'm super excited to be in this particular role because I'm a huge community person and I'm sure a lot of people on this call can probably relate to trying to struggle your way through this broad development community and trying to navigate and understand what you're supposed to do with your passions in your life. Um, and particularly for those of us that have a passion for inclusion and wanting to make sure that underrepresented groups are really seen, heard, and most importantly served. Um, you know, uh, I think opportunities like joining SID and helping to facilitate our shared uh, connections and our shared passions to work together and build off of each other's strengths. Um, I'm really excited for that. And that's kind of what um, brought me to this group. And I hope that that's uh, maybe a shared experience for others who are here. So um, with that said, I think we can maybe go ahead and just give you all a very quick uh, overview of maybe what we're going to try and accomplish in the next hour and 20 minutes or so. Um, uh, we're so, yeah. again, we're so glad that you're all, you're all here. Uh, and uh, so what we'll do first is, uh, you know, glad to meet everyone. Um, uh, and then we're gonna give a little bit of a history of the group. We're so happy to have our former co-chairs here and joining us um, to kind of talk about what they learned in their experience. Um, and then we'll also kind of look at some of the survey results that we had from um, something we sent out, I think last week or the week before. Thank you, Paul and Sid team. Uh, and then we're going to go into a couple brainstorming sessions today. Um, you know, as capacity development people, we love when it's about you, not about us. So we're hoping you all will be um, being in breakout groups, groups and getting to know each other. But most importantly, helping us as the co-chairs really consolidate um, into some concise ideas that we can share with the broader society for international development community. Um, and then after that, we're gonna have a second part where we're, we're really focusing on the community piece itself and wanting to do our best to serve all of you and the needs that you have for the coming year. Um, and then after that, we will wrap it up. So I'll turn it back over to you, Kaylin, to maybe talk about great. kind of who the, who the heck we are and what is our mission, so. That's great. Thank you so much, Ray. And I'm really excited to see um, everyone's introductions in the chat. And if you're just joining us and haven't introduced yourself, we still welcome you to do so. Um, and so the purpose of this inclusive development work group, so we have the our description here um, from the page, um, but really we're a group of professionals who um, are committed to advancing inclusive development practices across the sector. Um, through participatory principles. So that could be um, things like human-centered design um, to achieve gender equality and social inclusion. Um, we will examine uh, various forms um, of resilience and strength demonstrated by underrepresented populations throughout the world and the approaches that programs can utilize to include those populations. And within this description, we talk about a lot of the different social identities that this group might consider, whether that's um, indigenous populations, um, gender uh, or sexual orientation identity, um, minority groups um, like religious and ethnic minorities, people with disabilities. So really when we talk about inclusive development, we're talking about a lot of different intersecting identities. And as a result of that, something that we've done to kick off this year of the group is we did um, change the name, which used to be the Gender and Inclusive Development Work Group. Some of you I know have been members for a few years, so you will have seen this change. And just to give a little bit of context, um, this name change was in recognition that gender is still a huge part of what this group is gonna focus on. It's a, an identity that um, everyone has a gender identity and it's still going to be a big part of what we review. But we also really wanted to focus on this uh, concept of intersectionality uh, coined by Kimberly Crenshaw, you know, that gender is just one of many identities that could impact how we participate and benefit um, in international development programming, how we design international development programming. And so we felt that the term inclusive development working group uh, looked at people's identities a little bit more holistically and recognized gender as, you know, one piece of uh, their identities. So we did just want to emphasize that gender equality, 
and equity is still a huge part of this group. It's still really critical to our purpose, but that we also um, wanted to recognize these intersections. And Ryan, did you have anything else to add on that subject of the name changing? No, I think you pretty much covered it. Uh, uh, most importantly, just understanding intersectionalities and pluralism and complexity um, so that we're not just talking in one narrow stream or one silo, but we understand the nature of how things work uh, in our world to better serve uh, our the people we're serving. So thank you so much. Absolutely. And I should say too, as we're moving through these slides, uh, a lot of this today is going to be participatory and we're going to have some breakout groups. But while Ryan and I are doing our small amount of presentation, if there's questions, you're welcome to raise your hand or put them in the chat. You know, we'd love to hear from you throughout. So for the next slide, I want to look a little bit about what the group's already achieved so far. And we're really fortunate to have both Denise and Katie on the line. And I, I did ask Denise if she would give just a couple of remarks to recognize uh, her and Katie's amazing work on the group so far. And I wanted to just hand it over to her. Thank you, Kaylin. Yeah, I just wanted to say on behalf of, of Katie and myself that it really has been an honor and a pleasure to serve as the co-chairs of what was the Gender and Inclusive Development Working Group. And it's, it is really exciting that we've made this change um, <clears throat> to a more inclusive uh, and holistic look um, at, at inclusion in, in, our, in our field. And I think it, it's a really important time and that we're, we're now more than ever, we can really examine um, the various intricacies of inclusion. So I'm very, very pleased and excited about that um, because when you have, gen we had gender in the title, it, to be honest, it did more focus on, on gender. And so, um, you know, one thing that Katie and I did try to do is to open that up. And I'm really glad to see it going in this direction. <clears throat> very excited that we've got Kaylin and Ryan at the helm leading us through this. I think they're gonna be great and we're gonna really have a, a newly invigorated working group. So I'm very excited about that. And then lastly, I just wanna say a really thank you to Sid Washington for all their support and particularly Paul. I and mean, he is um, relentless in a good way about keeping us organized and supporting us. And so um, I really do thank, thank the whole Sid team. Um, and I'm really appreciative of the opportunity and looking forward to continuing uh, to participate in the, in the working group. Thank you so much, Denise. And thank you so much, Katie. I mean, I was, I was reviewing some of these wonderful historic sessions that I have on the slide here and found a picture from the 2019 planning session that I was able to attend that you all led. And I think you know, it's evident that you all have, have achieved so much um, in your time as co-chairs and really Ryan and I are excited to continue um, that high bar that you've set. And we agree. Thanks so much, Sid, for your support of this uh, wider group uh, committed to inclusive development. And I, I did just want to make a plug here on this slide for some of the amazing events that have happened in the last few years, especially for those of you who are newer to the group so that you could see some of the topics that the group focused on um, in its events in the last couple of years. And I'll also add here um, in the chat for your reading um, at your leisure, this amazing um, annual report that the group put together. Um, so this uh, tells a bit more about uh, their activities in the 2019 um, fiscal year. So I will add that shortly. Um, these events that are on the slide, when we go into brainstorming, you know, emerging topics or areas of interest that you all would like to see the group focus on in the next couple of years, it doesn't mean that we can't have events on these topics. Um, because I think that, especially when we're talking about um, a, a particular social group of people, there's so much diversity even within every social group that we're talking about. And so, I just wanted to say that if you see a topic up here that you're like, oh, I really think people need to learn more about this, don't feel that you can't share that idea when we go into brainstorming later. And I think I'll, I'll hand it back to Ryan. Yeah, well, and um, thank you so much uh, again to our, our former co-chairs and uh, Kaylin. Um, and just on this real quick, I wanted to also just talk a little bit more broadly about our mission as well. And I think 
one of the excellent opportunities we have today is to really ground ourselves as a network and as a community of practitioners and to think about where we are now as an industry, particularly as it comes to inclusive development, and what are some of those groundbreaking intersectional spaces that we can begin thinking about, as you can see from the previous years. You know, we're talking about what is cutting edge, what is new, what is what is being discovered. Um, and so as you think about that today and respond through our small breakout groups, I hope you'll help us to, you know, just help us get to that place um, it, it, with each other. So um, so with that, um, we I want to just quickly review some of the survey responses we got. Um, we had a, uh, just a few, five, but really powerful and important um, contributions. And I want to thank those of you on the line who were able to contribute as well um, beforehand. And I know all of you are going to contribute today, so thank you. Um, but some of the emerging topics that um, kind of came out of those um, questions we asked, um, we're looking at things like decolonizing development. What does that mean? Um, what does social inclusion mean and who actually is included in our global co context? Um, and social inclusion um, not only is a broad theory or abstract idea, but critical tools for design and implementation and even MEL. Um, in addition to that, thinking about the policy landscape when it comes to social inclusion, why does that matter and how does that buttress up a lot of the work that those of us in the development community are a part of. And I found this one particularly very interesting. I really love this idea and that it was inclusive communications and storytelling. And just to unpack the response a little bit, it's not even just um, about the images that we use or you know the voices, but really the creative process and genius that comes out of being an, uh, an inclusive community storyteller and making sure that those whom are being represented represented have the an entire say in um, throughout the entire process, even lead the process. So anyway, sorry, not, not, not that I'm favoring that one. I just I thought it was a great idea. <laughs> so um, so that was um, so those ideas lend themselves to the first breakout um, group that we're going to have today. We've placed some of them in the the jam board that we're going to use. So you'll see them again. But keep thinking about these types of ideas as we move into our breakout session. Um, this For the second breakout session, we'll be talking a little bit more about what you all want to get out of this group, what's important to you to walk away with. Um, and so um, from our survey results, we uh, um, many of the people responded saying they want broader connections with other professionals um, in addition to resources. Um, in addition to just exploring their understanding of intersectionality and the tools that work with different social groups. So these were some of our survey responses. And again, thank you to everyone who was able to contribute um, earlier on and we're looking to further um, contributions throughout the day. So back to you, Kaylin. Thank you. Great. Yeah. And thank you so much again to those who responded. I think something Ryan and I generally want to do this year is try to provide multiple ways to interact um, because we recognize, I think all of us have seen with the virtual work environment, many of us have faced this year that um, virtual work does provide some advantages um, and we want to, you know, hear from more diverse voices, give more opportunities to engage. So we're, we'll also welcome feedback on things like, is a survey helpful? Is there another way we could engage? So that's something we'll be talking about moving forward. So uh, for our first um, breakout groups, the topic that we're going to be discussing um, is what emerging topics in the inclusive development space would be most interesting to you to explore over the next year. Um, and we're going to break you into three groups. And within those groups, um, there'll be three phases of work. And you'll have about 20, 20 to 25 minutes to do this. So the first one will be putting as many ideas as possible down. And I'll show you the platform that we're gonna to use to do that shortly. So that any ideas, um, let yourself kind of just brainstorm. Um, and I like to think about too, removing any constraints. So don't think about, you know, like what would be hard about that topic. Just think about, you know, what you're most excited about and put any ideas down. In that second phase, you're gonna work with your small group to prioritize which of the topics you've put 
you think are most um, perhaps one of the biggest challenges our industry is facing or are something that hasn't been talked about before? You know, there's different ways to prioritize. We leave that to you to, to discuss with your group, but we'd like you to pick a few of the topics you've identified um, to prioritize. And then at the end of your conversation, once you've prioritized some topics, you'll think about, you know, the how um, you would share that with the, the working group. So would this be a panel event that we have? Uh, would, there, would this be a discussion group? Are there particular speakers on this subject, you know, that you think we should be in touch with? Um, just kind of some of the details you can start to think about for those priority areas. And um, this information that's on the slide will also be in the platform you're working in for your group. So if you haven't been able to write it down, um, don't worry, we'll have that too. So what I'm going to do um, now is I'm going to show you uh, the visual that you'll be working in in small groups. So let me just... Uh, that and we'll be it. sending them the link, right? Yes, um, we okay. will be. Yeah, so I'll send you this link shortly. So um, this link is going to take you to a, a Google platform called Jamboard. And this is basically like a virtual uh, flip chart. I almost forgot the word <laughs> because it's been so long since I saw an in-person flip chart. So um, this allows you to work as a group to brainstorm. Um, and each group, so as I mentioned, there's going to be three, and you'll see the number when you get sent to your breakout rooms has their own page. So you'll see here group one, and if you're in group two, you can scroll at the top here to your next frame, and you'll see your page for group two, um, and so on. So the way you can use this, um, we have some example post-it here, post-its here that came from the survey, as Ryan mentioned. So these were topics that came up in the survey. And the folks in group one, you can feel free to keep these or remove them. This is just was meant to be an example. Um, if you want to add a post-it, you can go to this sticky note icon on the left of your screen and click on it. And then you'll just type your idea here in the colored box. And um, those of you working in a group, if you'd like, you like, individuals could pick a post-it color. So like Ryan could work in green and I could work in blue. Um, that's completely up to you how you want to organize it. And when the time comes for prioritizing, you could physically move, you know, post-its to one part of the screen that are, say, your priority ideas. Um, we actually are open to how you as a group want to organize your Jamboard. And if, if you like to, you can also add text boxes, you can um, draw, you can um, put a circle around things, add images, but really none of that's required. I would say the most important thing is just to use the post-it function, especially in that first brainstorming phase. Um, and as a reminder, the three phases of your group work are here at the top right of your screen. Um, so this is what you'll be doing in your uh, 20 to 25 minutes as a group. First, you're brainstorming and you can do that individually, um, and see each other's ideas, then you're prioritizing, and then you're thinking about how. Um, you would uh, recommend us working as a group to share those priorities. Um, and as, uh, so, as, so that will, that's one thing. And then Ryan and I will also be jumping between groups so that we can hear all of your amazing ideas. And you'll also have somebody from SID um, with you in your group too, which is fantastic. Um, finally, one more thing. Once you have selected your priorities, also select someone in your group to share those priority areas with the wider group when we come back from our discussion. So it doesn't need to be a formal report out, just sharing those couple of ideas that your group was most excited about. Um, yes, and one more thing I wanted to clarify. So this is a self-led conversation. There's a, Ryan and I will be jumping around, SID staff will be there, but the group um, is gonna work together to lead your conversation. So uh, any anyone can step up and share ideas, there isn't, uh, one person uh, leading these. Uh, the idea is to work together. Just make sure it's inclusive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think another reason we're using Jamboard is right because some people may not be as comfortable talking verbally, but they like to write ideas down on post its. Um, or some people may not like to use Jamboard and uh, somebody else could be listening to their ideas and write it on post its. There's a lot of ways to work. Um, so I will share the link with you all. 
Um, are there is are there any questions though before we dive into our group activity? You can put them in the chat or raise your hand. Nope. Uh, Ryan, did you have one? Okay. Just counting down. Sorry, three, two, right. one. So I will. I'll put the link um, right now to the Jamboard that you all can access it. So I'll give everyone a moment to uh, bring that up in your own browser. And then um, I will ask the team at SID to work on the breakout rooms um, and, and send folks there. And so it's about 1030 right now. So we're gonna aim to come back at uh, around 1050, if we need a few more minutes, 1055, we'll, we'll kind of check in on how things are going. So we'll plan to come back at 1050. Right, great. So we're going to send you all to breakout rooms. You'll be magically sent forth. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sid team, for that. Hello. Hi there. Yeah, we had a little te minor technical difficulty, so we're closing the rooms. Oh, okay. So are we in the room right now? Is this our group? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I'll just no, Yeah, no, we're, we're, as I said, we're just, we minor technical difficulties. So we're, so we're, we're not starting yet. We're going to, re, we, we're, we will be resetting the rooms in a couple minutes. Got it. Thank you. I think the breakout sessions brought us all back together. Huh. I was yeah. just getting to know Seth. So I know well. what happened. I was, I was, I was, I, I texted Ryan. I texted you and Kaylin. We had an issue with the timer, so I had to reset it. Oh. No worries. Twenty-five minutes, please. Well, twenty-three now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get new members. <laughs> I, mean, I was just getting to hear Jerry's intro. I know. <laughs> Okay. Now Are we going to get sent to again? All right. Okay. Yeah, now. <laughs> Are we back to the same group at least? That would be nice. <laughs> we picked up one person. Oh, that's great. Hi, yeah, everyone. We have, yeah, we have uh, Pebbles from Sid, which is great. Yes. Oh, okay. So I was yet, yeah, well, I'll finish. Um, Leonard Tesher, I also am the Secretariat of the Inclusive Education Collaborative, which is a new influencing platform established in 2020 on obviously inclusive education. Background, I was the architect of the IFAS Disability Inclusion Initiative, uh, was the chief of party of a USAID inclusive development project in the mid, about 2009 to 10, around there and um, ended up being the managing director of the AIR International Development Program. So I've been 
doing inclusive development before it was cool. It's a great intro. Rebecca, do you want to share more about your yeah. experience? Yeah, um, I am currently the um, Director of Global Development Program Management at World Learning, and I lead a lot of our gender equity and social inclusion work at World Learning, as well as co-chair, well, I'm the outgoing co-chair of the TAP Community of Practice. Um, most people know that World Learning is one of the organizations that helped um, found the, the TAP Toolkit, which is um, a toolkit that takes an intersectional lens to doing um, you know, social inclusion analysis and inclusive design and implementation. Um, so that's what has been my focus a lot. Um, my, my background is more in education and gender um, and that intersection. And Jerry and I used to work at AIR together back in the day. So he also exposed me to a lot of uh, thinking and work in disability inclusion. That's wonderful. Um, and Pebbles, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure, thanks, Kaylin. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Pebble Sadias. I'm the membership and external affairs manager at Sid Washington. Um, I will not be participating in your discussion today, but I am excited to hear all about it. Um, I'll be mostly behind the scenes just taking notes for our internal records. Great, thank you. Um, and yes, I'm Kaylin Sullivan Fleury. Um, I uh, work at Commodics International on our gender equality and social inclusion team. And I, it, it's a globally facing team um, as well as across sectors. So um, work on kind of a variety of different um, topics um, within the inclusive development space. And really excited to be kicking off our time as co-chairs with Ryan and to be getting to know each of you a little bit better. So, uh, and, and it looks yeah, like Jerry. someone someone else has joined us. Martin. Oh, hi, Martin. Uh, we were just going around and, and doing some introductions. Would you like to introduce yourself? I think you might be muted. That's right. Okay. Can you hear me now? <laughs> okay. Now everything is perfect. Yes. <laughs> okay. My name is uh, Martin Chende. I'm from uh, DR Congo. I'm lecturer at Kinshasa University, uh, economic department. I did my master degree in South Korea. I went to study about how the, those uh, Asia countries become uh, strong economically within a short period of time. I'm writing my dissertation now, still about uh, how some African countries, they can do the same things than uh, some uh, Asia countries. And now I'm live in United States, state of men. Eh? I'm a program supervisor within uh, an NGO. So that's all. <laughs> yes, that's wonderful. I'm in Maryland too. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, wonderful. Um, I am, I'm kind of just here to listen to you all working together and help uh, share ideas. So uh, we have the, the Jamboard where you could add post-it ideas for topics you want the group to focus on this year, or you can start the discussion verbally. That works too. Hmm. Hmm. I'm, I'm fascinated by the decolonizing topic. Um, uh, it, it probably angers our employers, but uh, <laughs> or makes them very nervous. But it, you know, I often struggle with who's in the room when we're having discussions on policy and and you know planning, and it's it's not very representative. And so, how do you know what? How do we develop the model, or how do we? use our platform to raise others up, knowing that these platforms exist. Um, the, the other thing that I'm interested in, and this gets to our funders, is um, developing metrics for inclusion. Oftentimes our metrics are focused on short-term goals and creating inclusive platform um, sectors, societies is something that takes multiple 
It's not gonna happen in a single project cycle. So I'll just throw those ideas out there and then step back. Yeah, I agree that the um, decolonizing development discussion is is really interesting and rich. There's probably a lot of layers to it. Um, I similarly think it makes our employers and our donors very uncomfortable. Um, but I think that there could be there's a I think there's a lot to unpack there, and there's some interesting discussions already going on about like localization versus decolonization. One is maybe a more politically inclusive way to talk about decolonization. Um, there's some interesting debates happening in like, you know, some of the Oxfam um, blogs and from Adesso and different things about like, you know, the political nature of this conversation and like how to dig into it. And I think it could be interesting because, you know, USAID and other donors endorse localization, but what does that really mean if you like kind of peel back the layers? Um, so I think that could be an interesting and rich discussion to kind of get to the practical nature of it, because a lot of the discussions are really theoretical, historical, which are also interesting, but being that we're mostly practitioners, it could be interesting to kind of get to the meat of it. I also agree with, about the metrics discussion. Um, getting, you know, we, we have a lot of challenges in our own programs about appropriate measures when you get into some of the more behavior change things around like, how do you unpack people's attitudes and shifting attitudes, hopefully about social inclusion, um, social norms, deeply ingrained and held beliefs? What, what is your M&E plan going to do about that? How are you going to responsibly measure it and responsibly report out on it? I agree as well. And <clears throat> at EGPAF, we've been talking a lot about anti-racism, of course, as I'm sure many places are. and um, dynamics with decolonizing development. Um, <clears throat> one challenge that I think is certainly within the main population outside of development, but also within our development population, which is a lot of people don't think about this at all. <clears throat> and they also equate diversity with like, especially diversity in staffing with like, well, we don't have any problems. What do you mean? And a lot of people also don't see the gender dynamics of um, even just meetings, like when someone meets, whether it's a local um, staff or an international staff, if they're a woman, you know, meeting with the minister of education or health, they don't necessarily see dynamics of gender playing in there, um, which anyway, that's bigger. But um, one thing is like getting people to understand that there is an issue even people who work internationally every single day. And then um, I came across something fascinating. I know we only have so much time, but an example of like a practical decolonizing development um, uh, point within health, which has, I think education has definitely been um, the biggest area where disability inclusion has made an impact and health is behind, um, at least in my opinion. But an example of that, I found really fascinating also having come from the education sector is decolonizing um, training, training certification and education of healthcare workers, the curricula that are used are based on British often and, and West industrialized countries that have different health issues. Um, so maybe we can find a way to explore sector specific ways of decolonizing development that are very practical for people. Yeah, I agree with you on health. They, um, particularly, uh, I'm most familiar with USAID, you know, for example, the vision for health system strengthening draft that was surfaced last year didn't mention disability um, at all. Um, and it's a real gap. I think at least core group was able to put in some input after they saw that it had nothing. So hopefully that's some yeah, positive. I, I, yeah, I, I facilitated that and I haven't seen the re revised uh, final version of the, of the vision statement. So I'm not sure what's in it. 
just so you all know, I started, I was listening to your fantastic ideas and putting them on post-it in the Jamboard too. And you can edit them if I didn't capture it appropriately. Thank you. Sorry, we're forgetting about the post-its, but it's an awesome idea. I love it. Thank you very much. Yeah. No problem. It's hard to it's hard to think and type at the same time. I understand. <laughs> we can work together. Any other ideas uh, for topics or even I, I like how you all have been building on each other's ideas too. I mean, another thought that I think, you know, we talk about it a lot, but it like it never ceases to be interesting to me is um, the different examples of how people at, at like, you know, at the project level, at the activity level, um, their experiences, failures, successes with actually implementing some of this stuff. Like, hey, I took this tool or I took this, um, you know, idea and we practiced it. And this is like the details of how it went and what was hard about it, how we overcame that challenge or how we didn't and how it's still difficult. Um, I think some of that, you know, granular sharing can help make these really big ideas make, make more concrete sense. Yeah, and I think we have in development competing priorities or aspirations. One is, you know, the aspiration on equity and inclusion, and then you, you shift over to results-based financing, which can um, incentivize segregation particularly we see that in education or exclusion you know you put you know, so how do we and i know usaid is talking about what should results-based financing look like and how should it be used and what you know could we advance or come up with ideas on how it can be used to prioritize equity and inclusion you know, Rebecca, I'm thinking in the education space. Yeah. What if we prioritize moving forward the bottom quintile of learners rather yeah. than helping those on the cusp reach a grade level benchmark or in addition to that, you know, being disruptive. Yeah, I, I think that's a great topic because, I mean, let's be honest, we all are incentivized by what our donors are putting out for bids, contracting us to do, paying us to do. And I think we kind of ignore that at the entire industry's peril. And then we sit there and wonder why we aren't meeting these, you know, global targets for, for moving the needle on inclusion. It's a good point. Education's an easy example. I don't know about the other ones. <laughs> yeah, I think on the health side, from what I've seen is, um, I'm only, I mean, I, I can't speak for every IP working on health, but um, there's this focus on like, you know, especially with HIV programs are extremely demanding, like it, it, almost more than education. It depends, I mean, it's not a blanket statement, but the, the, the frequency of the reporting, the focus on the targets being so precarious, a lot of um, health IPs see it as like, well, some of these, some of these inclusive aspects, not all of them are extra sprinkled on top. We have to focus on our core programming. Um, gender and youth, yes. Disability, not sure. Um, so yeah, there's like, how do you penetrate the core demands from the donors with making both staff and donors understand more that it's not just, um, this, is, this is part of the core. This is not outside of the core. Um, and it's hard when you have donors that you know there are people within them that get it but then you'll have like a mission that issues a solicitation and has boilerplate language on everything. <laughs> so anyway. Well, Laura, you get into something that I've thought a lot about, which is how do you build progressive realization into every project cycle? Yeah. You know, the universality of your goal. So exactly. in, in the health sector, um, yeah, it's, we're in triage mode. Yeah. Yep. And so, you don't get the, f and, and also you, you don't, disability, for example, is not talked about as a global phenomenon. It's, yeah. so you will, you create space for myth and, mm -hmm. and stereotype to take over. Um, and we don't talk about science and autism or cerebral palsy or mm -hmm. things like that. And, and so it creates stigmatization from birth. Yeah. 
Um, but but again, it's a, it, dealing with the donor is how do you do the scaffolding on equity on inclusion from day one so that mm -hmm. you're not you know you you disrupt the idea of low hanging fruit. Exactly. So could we, <clears throat> Kaylin, I know you said that it would be um, just because, you know, I checked out what y'all did uh, last year. Um, it was great to see disability on there. And I'm wondering, can we dig more into it? Can we provide more information? I feel like right now this environment of, in the U.S., it's focused more on, on anti-racism, which is very important. But I think it's an environment where more people are open to other aspects of inclusion. So just providing information to people and trying to like really get a lot of participation in events about these topics to just inform people and help them get mm -hmm. it somehow. Um, like the models of disability and like statistics and, you know, anyway, just another kind of like maybe a way of yeah. an and, event of some sort. And Laura, I would love to have a sidebar discussion with you about this because yeah, <laughs> this has really been the thread of my career is Re Rebecca's laughing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, same so, here. Um, I yeah. to connect with you outside of this, yeah. Yeah. There's always, I think, more to discuss, you know, when Jerry was mentioning people with autism, for example, right? Like I, I think I attend more events on disability inclusion that address uh, being deaf or being visually impaired, but that don't address cognitive disabilities. And so I think when you talked about models of disability, Laura, like I think there's a lot of information that could be shared at events. And I also think, I think it was Rebecca who made the point about granular specifics. I think if we could have some events too where people talk about what really worked for disability inclusion, you know, how much did it actually cost to provide accommodations? How did they find their partners? How did they really measure their disability inclusion work? Like, I think that stuff is particularly interesting to the members of this working group because I think a lot of us are tasked with doing this work, but there aren't necessarily a lot of specific examples. So, um, or they're not widely shared, which I think is another um, challenge. So. I, I completely agree. And I, I did just want to say too, you know, with our last few minutes, Martin, if you had anything to add and or um, if you all want to start prioritizing what you wanted to report out on when we go back to the group. Yeah, uh, one most important things that I would like to raise when we talk about uh, discrimination and inclusion, especially about uh, people from uh, Asia. I do realize where I live that people from Asia, they feel more discriminated. It seems that they don't feel welcome. They feel that where they don't belong to the United States and people think that they don't believe, belong in the United States. But they are good people. They are American. They live in the United States. What can we do to assist some Asia people to let them feel that they belong to our society, yeah. That's so important. And I, I think that something that's exciting that Sid did is they've also launched a group on, um, I believe it's race and ethnicity uh, inclusion with the idea that they will be focusing specifically on some of the conversations happening in the US about international development organizations becoming anti-racist. And I think this group our group should be partnering with them during the year on some of these topics like discrimination that you just mentioned, Martin, decolonizing yeah. aid that we've talked about. I think there's a lot of opportunities for us to work together this year. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a very important example. So we have a couple of minutes left as a group. Is there anyone who uh, wants to, if you could pick, you know, a few topics, uh, we have them on our board. Are there topics that have come up to you that you would want to particularly share with the group when we return? And is anyone interested in being our volunteer to report out? It's okay to take some time to read. And I, I, I was just listening, so my post-its may not have uh, captured everything that was said, but. Okay. 
Kaylin, are these post-its just ours or are they everybody's post-its? These are just ours in group three. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the other, each group has their own page. Okay. Yeah. And then so they'll report out too and we'll be able to see if we have some commonalities. Okay. Thanks. We covered a lot of ground. We did. <laughs> we did cover a lot of ground. This was a rich discussion in a short amount of time. I think if prioritizing feels hard with the time we have left too, one person could also try to summarize some of these, the ideas that came through when we go back to the main group. And just so you all don't get surprised, I think we're going to get sent back to the main room in about 20 seconds, <laughs> 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 which feels a little strange. <laughs> yeah. If someone else could volunteer to present, that would be great. I don't feel I can capture this well. So. I can take a stab at it. It'll be really summary level. That would be great, Rebecca. And of course, if others want to jump in, yeah. you're welcome to. Um, thank you for volunteering. Yeah, no problem. And okay. we are, we're group one, right? When we get called on? Group three. Group three. Okay. Oh, so you might have been looking. I might be in the wrong jam board. <laughs> That's okay. Are, no, it's okay. We are group three. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if, yeah, I'm happy to help if there's anything missed, but I, I think you've got it. Yeah, our, ours is actually a little bit for the third uh, slide. And, and, oh, I see. Yeah, sorry. And Laura, just uh, my email is jerrymendez at gmail.com if you want to be in touch. Perfect, thank you. Um, yeah. Kaylin, just really quick, I don't, if I follow that link, um, I just go to group one's Jamboard. I don't see anything else. At the very top, do you see a, um, a oh. square with two arrows next to Got it? Got it. Yes. Yeah, no, it's okay. This is a new platform. So totally. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, sorry about that. Thanks for no worries. And then and for the next work that we're all going to do together, well, there's more slides in the same deck. Okay. So you'll just keep hitting those arrows forward to find your next jam board. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, this was a new tool to me too before. Yeah, I've session. used Jamboard, but I didn't realize you could add multiple slides. That's very good to know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. Well, I think we'll go back to the main room mm -hmm. and uh, thanks Rebecca for offering to yeah. report out. Really appreciate it. Great chatting with you all. So we are waiting for other group, right? That's right. Yeah, the other groups are returning. <laughs> and once we start reporting out, I can, I'll share my screen again so people can see the different results. Okay. I think we may actually have everyone back now. Okay. And just a shout out to my group, those, that amazing conversation we were just having, please write it down because I don't want to forget it. <laughs> please write <laughs> them down. That was so great. Okay, sorry. Keep amazing. <laughs> amazing. Okay. Well, welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for your um, hard work. I'm going to share um, my screen so that we all have the same view of the, the Jamboard. And uh, we are, just to keep it short on time, we're going to go through each group and just ask you to report out the top two to three ideas that you discussed, uh, the things that maybe got the most attention or the most consensus among the group. This can be a very short report out. And as you all are listening um, in the chat, uh, please feel free to add, you know, plus one if you like an idea or if you have uh, uh, other interests like speaker ideas or things about an idea that you like, you can add those in the chat. And I'll just, um, as, as different groups are presenting, I will share their Jamboard so that everyone can uh, see it. 
So could somebody from the, the first group, this uh, Jamboard that I have up here, uh, share your kind of top few ideas or themes? So I'm gonna go ahead if no one else is gonna go for, and I hope that, I think I'm, I hope I'm gonna do a good job of summarizing. I think we talked about, we had two separate, um, blocks of conversation. <laughs> I think we went through the exercise and we tried to put things in stacks here. We talked about um, uh, understanding what inclusion is, uh, making sure that it's something that is part of uh, the whole design, all the stages of programming, making sure that it translates to recruitment and HR and, and, and working policies. And then there's another stack that talks about data collection, knowing how to measure it at every stage, something that is beyond just gender equity uh, indicators. Um, and then a different stack that had to do with localization, uh, communication. Uh, there was also something about uh, climate change, but um, we, we ended up the conversation <laughs> talking about a larger theme that seemed to kind of um, become obvious uh, at, within our group. And as we're looking at, you know, everyone in the work group today, it seems like um, every time we attend events like these, there's always a much higher number of women uh, than men. Um, and it seems that gender equality, gender equity, inclusion, whether it's gender or disability, uh, seems to obviously interest all of us and that's why we're here. But we were discussing how can we make sure that um, other people who maybe are not women or are not disabled or are not within these minority groups to understand that inclusion benefits all and that they should also make it a priority. And I think someone came up with the tagline that inclusion means you. <laughs> so it doesn't only mean uh, me as a woman or me as a disabled person or whatever. Uh, so that's kind of the final maybe topic that we came up with. That's fantastic. Thank you, Linda, for that amazing report out. And I love the idea of adding a tagline to remember an idea better, because I, I think that helps me remember ideas. So fantastic. And uh, your board looks like it's full of rich um, ideas. Uh, I'll hand it um, to the to group two now. And if you've heard an idea that you were going to report out on already, you know, feel free to just say like plus one. We also talked about that. Um, as well. So I'll, I'm going to move to the next uh, Jamboard. This is uh, group two and ask someone to report out on this. All right. I think I was defaulted to do this. So uh, please, my group, my group, please add anything else. Uh, but uh, so, well, we had uh, some guide. We decided to break ours into four different buckets uh, based on the themes that we saw, everything from trainings and work-life balance, equal, including access research data and approaches, as well as specifically decolonization. I think as we prioritize, we recognize that um, not only talking about decolonization as a broad, hey, ha ha, let's all get behind it, but really diving into the depths of what it actually is and what it means for us in the development community. I thought that was a big part. And very similarly, but not necessarily exact, is looking at um, specifically work-life um, balance of development professionals and how you know just the nature of the our working culture um, whether it's burnout or just our in how we approach um, the work itself uh, leads to either success or failure um, and then uh, most importantly the third one thinking about ensuring uh, and and again linking back a lot to decolonization and that is how are we ensuring that we are centering local communities, uh, in particularly in the context of storytelling and representation and um, being a part of the work. So, um, um, and then one last thing was, um, we had a wonderful recognition from Karine that also goes a little bit with uh, decolonization inclusion. What does that mean when we wanna mainstream this idea in, throughout the body of the development community? Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll do a shout out to all the TAP tool team that has been the working group, especially who are all here, um, who have some ideas on that. So 
Um, thank you. That's, that's, I think, the gist of our group. If there's anything else from our group, please type it in the chat. Thank you. That's great. Thanks, Ryan. I love the way you all added some themes here near the post-its too. That's really cool. Okay, and so group three, um, I will hand it over for a report out um, from, I believe it was Rebecca doing it. Yeah. Yeah, um, great. So uh, plus one on the decolonization localization discussion. Um, we also talked about, um, you know, metrics for inclusion in different sectors and and how it's challenging, especially when you get into um, some of the more, um, the indicators that you can't observe directly, they're about attitudes and behaviors and we're not there to see them a lot of the time. Um, we also talked about um, the need for practical examples of challenges and solutions, um, how people implement, you know, in the day-to-day -day activities and how teams grapple with power and competing incentives, wherever they may be coming from um, as we try and hit those targets, but also meet our social inclusion um, goals and principles. We talked a lot about disability inclusion, different models and different sectors. Um, also practical examples, you know, there's a lot out there, but it often doesn't get to everybody. So different um, staff or different organizations maybe aren't aware of some of the diversity of disability inclusion efforts at play. It's not, you know, just wheelchairs or observable disabilities. There's a lot of, you know, other rich areas that can that can be focused on. Um, and we also talked about shifting attitudes on social inclusion in our workplaces, in meetings, and the dynamics and discrimination um, or racism or, or you know, other isms that come up in meetings and workplace culture um, and how to have more proactive and accountable discussions about that. And I'm sure there was others that I missed as well. <laughs> That was great, Rebecca. I was in, I got to be in her group and uh, I thought it was a fantastic overview. And if others have uh, additions, I, I see some agreement in the chat, which is wonderful. Um, please feel free to add them. But to keep things moving, I am going to hand it over to my co-chair, Ryan, to introduce our uh, second part, second activity of the day. Yes, and just real quick, I, I wanted to also note that this year we also have a new working group, uh, which is centered around race, ethnicity, and diversity. Um, and so there may be some opportunities to share in the decolonization conversation, um, either co-sponsoring or participating in one of their activities as well. So we'll be looking into uh, our partnerships with other working groups as well. Um, so uh, we have a limit, we have about 25 minutes left and we're gonna send you into, uh, I think the same groups probably for about 15 minutes. And one of the things that we wanna move to in this space now is we have fantastic ideas, we've captured them and hopefully we'll consolidate them, Kaylin and I, uh, into some really meaningful events. And we hope that conversation can continue. Most specifically, we would love your specific ideas on what speakers, formats, and any other types of things so that that would help us narrow down these broad themes to specific events. So please continue to email us, share those with us, etc. So the next piece is really focused on what you all want to get out of this, this group. What does it mean to you and how how will you come to this space? Um, um, because we want it to ultimately serve you and your needs as practitioners. Um, and so we're gonna do the same activity, um, but this time we really want you to focus on the specific activities the working group can undertake. Yes, we traditionally put on um, presentations and uh, or uh, panel discussions, those types of things, which is predominantly what we will do, but what are you trying to get out of it? Um, and so, what I want you to think about is one year from now, if you're thinking about coming to our meetings regularly, coming to the events, what is it you're really hoping to get out of it? Um, and then from that purview, what actions have been taken over the course of that year to really make you feel that way? So Paul's gonna break us out again. We'll come back in 15 minutes. Uh, and then we'll have a very quick report. Uh, we probably won't report out, but we'll have it, we'll summarize and close out the session. So let's take one more time in this group and um, we look forward to your ideas. Thank you, everyone. It's going great so far. Kaylin, anything yeah. else you wanna say? I just wanted to say the, the Jamboard link is the same. 
So when you open it up, um, you'll see I'm showing here on my screen at the very top, you can move between frames. And so you can find the Jamboards for this part two discussion as your group would like to use it as kind of a note taking device. Um, and you can find your group number by scrolling between um, these pages. Thank you yeah. so much. Of course. Yeah, ready to go. I know. <laughs> I'm so excited. I love these conversations. <laughs> All right, on the count of three, you will all be sent one, two, two and a half point three. Oh, there it is. Hi. Hi, Karen. I think you might be muted. Hi there. Hi, Sophie. Okay. Ah, there you are. Now I can hear you. Oh, you changed me into a new group. Yes. <laughs> we switched we switched our groups. Okay, good. Hi everyone. Hi. Right. Hello, Karen. So for this group, um, we'll have a little bit less uh, time. Um, but I know that some of you haven't met before. So if you want to quickly introduce yourselves, that, that would be fine. Um, I, I'm Kaylin Sullivan, co-chair, Kaylin Sullivan Flurry. I just got married, so I'm adjusting <laughs> to an additional <laughs> name. Um, <laughs> Kaylin Sullivan Flurry, um, co-chair of the group, and I work at Chemonix International. I'm uh, Martin Kende. I'm from Congo. I'm a lecturer at Kinshasa University. And uh, right now I live in United States. I'm program supervisor in one NGO. Hi, I'm Karen Saba. I am a conflict disability specialist. I just came back from the Philippines where I was working with USAID. Hello, everyone. I'm Seth. I'm an MPA candidate at the Middlebury Institute of International Studies and Intercultural Competencies intern at the Peace Corps Office of the Third Goal. Everyone, Sophie Javers here. Apologize again for um, not having my video on. I just am still in my robe and haven't had my coffee yet because I'm out in California. So it's just a little bit earlier for me. Um, I uh, am a policy engagement coordinator for a USAID funded um, research group um, called, we work with the Feed the Future. So we're a Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Markets, Risk and Resilience. So we do um, kind of resilience and poverty alleviation uh, research. This is academic uh, research, but I'm super interested in this group to kind of understand a little bit more about um, kind of what, can, actually just what we we're talking about, kind of what activities people are taking, this industry is taking to, um, to increase uh, inclusivity in their, I mean, from my perspective, I'm interested in inclusivity in research, but also kind of within the industry as well, so. Great, thanks for waking up early to join us. No worries. A lot of our partners are um, based in East Africa. So actually a lot of my calls start at um, four or five in the morning frequently. So uh, seven or eight o'clock is actually quite a, a luxury for me. So this is right. But I did, sorry, I didn't manage to quite get myself together. So. No problem. Um, and I see we also have a Pebbles on the line from Sid, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks again, Kaylin. Hi, everyone. This is Pebbles Dahas. I am the Membership and External Affairs Manager at Sid Washington. Um, so I won't be involved in your discussion for this breakout room, but I will be taking notes. Great. Thank you. Well, we have um, we have a, another Jamboard if people want to share ideas uh, that way about what you would have liked to see accomplished a year from now, but people can also share verbally if they prefer to. Just to clarify is specifically what to accomplish at SID, right? Not generally or? I think both? just with, so 
Uh, I think, great question. I think it's specifically focused on this working group, the Inclusive Development Working Group at SID. And then I also think from the personal aspect, if there's anything that you're hoping to have achieved a year from now, for example, for me, I'm hoping a year from now, I'll have a bigger network of like contacts uh, working globally, um, or I'm hoping to learn about a new topic, a specific topic. You could add that from the personal um, level too. Great, thanks for the clarification. And uh, for me, because I'm a kind of uh, international guy, you know, and my wife, she comes from China, you know, <laughs> so I'm everywhere in the world. So what I like to accomplish, I think I cannot do more compared to my experiences. So I do realize that I like to bring more to, you know, international development group. But so far, it seems that I'm not bringing my expertise. So I would like from you to give to me some uh, suggestion in order to be able to accomplish more inside the organization, to bring more out output. Hmm. That's great. Um, I Thanks, Martin, for sharing. And I'm seeing yeah. some good ideas on the board. Examples yeah. of failures and successes other programs have had around inclusivity, decolonization, a larger network. Um, are there any other ideas? Feel free to add them on the board or share. So that was me that put the um, kind of, I'd like to hear more about failures and successes of other programs. I think a unique um, aspect of a kind of group like this could be that, you know, people are coming from, um, you know, diverse backgrounds, I mean, generally within the development industry, so not that diverse, but, um, but still, you know, understanding what different um, implementing partners or programs have been um, doing in terms of, you know, this work and, you know, what has actually been a success in terms of a, a way that they implemented a program or what has been an absolute disaster, because I feel like we really need to know about those as well. I cannot I cannot access the web the, the group. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, maybe Karen, if, if you'd like uh, to share ideas in the chat or verbally, we can add them into the board and I can read ideas that are coming through too. Another one that was added was uh, to see more inclusive trainings or webinars that focus on our own cultural biases that affect how we work in international development and tools and strategies to be more inclusive on a digital platform, which is very important, especially with virtual work and global work. Yeah, absolutely. I wrote those two, but the first one in terms of an event where you can reflect and focus on your own cultural awareness and how that affects your work. I think that's really important because at least a lot of the, whether it's a training or a webinar and in, in trying to prepare yourself to go into different cultures, it's more focusing on learning about that culture, which is an important aspect, whether it's the language or the customs. But I think it would be a positive step to focus on how your own cultural perspectives affect how you learn about that culture as well. Okay. Um, well, this is not, may not be not knowledgeable to everybody, but for People who work at USAID and the State Department in order to do international work and travel overseas, you have to pass a medical examination. You, and this policy 
it's not inclusive to many people. So it, the inclusive hiring mechanism in international organization. I, I don't know how to say it, but uh, that's a big issue because yeah. without, uh, without having people having there is the difference between disability and health care and that and that hindered a lot of people from getting hired and hindered about getting the inclusive programs. I don't, I don't know how to say it. Yeah, that's very, very helpful and clear. And I um, I saw it was just added to the Jamboard too. But yeah, inclusive hiring practices and, and looking at policies too um, is really important. We have a couple more minutes left. So if anyone had other ideas they wanted to share. Yeah. So maybe based on what Karen just mentioned, it would be um, it would be good to separate maybe the tracks of of activities in the sense that we could have one focusing on the industry itself and what issues of kind of um, you know inclusivity issues and um, maybe cultural biases set that you were mentioning or you know that kind of thing that within within the industry and within the people who work in the industry and then separately kind of have another track that would really dig into kind of the development programming and implementation of development programming and issues yeah. of inclusivity there. So I feel like, I mean, not that there aren't overlapping kind of areas, absolutely there are, but I feel like they could, it could get confusing if you keep them conflated, that it might be nice to have them separate. Well, yeah, that, but in another way, if you cannot have if you don't have the people inside who have the technical knowledge, how can you implement policies? How can you implement programs for that group? Yeah, Karen, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it has to happen simultaneously kind of in both areas, both in the industry and in programming. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's such an important point because I know this has come up in my own work where people who have experience with inclusion work at the program or activity level are sometimes being asked to do diversity, equity, and inclusion work internal to corporations or organizations as well. And they're very related and they should be happening in tandem, but they also sometimes need more staff or skill sets. Um, or diverse perspectives. And I think that with SID launching the uh, race, ethnicity, and diversity work group as well, I think we should be coordinating with them this year on some of these topics too. I don't know. I've been doing this for a long time. So. So they should have come everywhere I go, so. Yeah. That's a good point, Karen. This is, it, it's a lot and it's going to be an ongoing process. So we constantly will be pushing it. It's hard work, <sighs> sure. I see we are going to be sent back to the main room soon. So if anyone else wanted to share anything else, please, you're welcome to. Yeah, uh, yeah, to me, uh, I have a lot of people, they really want to participate to do something, but because we are talking about the diversity, but they are facing a language barrier. They are not able to speak language like you they feel shame to express their opinion. How ah, to assist those kind of people with a skill, but we do face a language barrier to be more participative, you know, to feel welcome in our group. 
and to bring their contribution too. Yeah, that's so important. Thanks. Martin, it's a conversation we've been having at my organization a lot too, is how do you include, think about linguistic inclusion? How do you make your events interpreted uh, or, or even like things like announcements in different languages to um, help people feel more included or having events in different languages? I think that's a great point. That's true. Well, thank you. Thank you all so much for your ideas. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank you. A lot of new perspectives, really. Yeah. Appreciate it. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much. And I'm glad that you all chose to stay on the extra two minutes that you were provided uh, before, because my group came back two minutes early. So thank you for being here. <laughs> and we really do appreciate uh, you uh, joining us. Um, Kaylin, do we think we have enough time to go through um, a quick report out or do we just want to move? I can do either one, I think. Um, I think if, yeah, if the group just wants to, if each group maybe wants to share just a couple high level ideas, do it kind of rapid fire because our closing will only take a minute or so. Sounds perfect. Yeah. Okay, um, do you want to pop up the Jamboard real quick? Yes, Sorry, I can do that. My iPad. So I'll go for group one. Um, I think one of our, um, our big takeaways, we're just recognizing, thank you, Amy Chase, for the image of community, really <laughs> wanting to ensure that uh, we cultivate a sense of belonging amongst us as professionals, but also thinking to ensure that when we think of our community, we're broadening it beyond just this group um, and understanding that we live in a global context, as Eno said, you know, and making sure we bring in all sorts of professionals that are uh, make up our field and we bring in people from around the world um, uh, and that we're finding spaces to learn and grow. So that's our group, group one. Great, group two, I know we didn't discuss a report out. Would anyone like to go? Otherwise I'm happy to do so. Okay, so I think we, we, sh we discussed some of the same ideas. We talked about hoping to gain a larger community, a larger network um, over the course of the year. Um, oh, sorry, I see the chat is coming too. Oh, great, okay. Um, and we talked about uh, wanting to understand how other organizations approach inclusion and in program design at the end of the year um, more conversation about um, uh, trainings that address our internal biases or, or corporate biases in addition to how we work externally in program work. And then also thinking about inclusion from a language perspective in programming. Um, and let's see, also um, thinking about the more about the power dynamics um, uh, between different offices internationally, genders, this idea of, of Western um, in, in uh, decolonizing aid that we kind of talked about earlier. And finally, um, successes and failures that other programs have had around inclusion. So lots of great ideas. And then group three, it looks like you might've had more of a verbal discussion. So if there's anything you want to share, you're welcome to. Um, I can say something very quickly. Um, one of, well, our first goal was to meet in person at one point, which might be aspirational. <laughs> but um, we talked uh, one of the things uh, about donors and maybe like what donors can we find a way to reach that are not the ones based on uh, building on what someone else said before about, you know, the usual suspects coming to these groups, which is fantastic. Um, but how do we reach people who don't and like donors who, donor representatives who don't, who aren't doing this on a daily basis, as opposed to the champions we have within those same donors. Um, we revisited metrics again and how important that is and maybe like um, exploring ways to see how metrics could work in different sectors. Um, I don't know if we really talked as much about like, I don't know, I think like maybe panels and trainings. I'm not sure if we got more beyond that. Um, does any of my, do any of my colleagues have more 
I know we don't have a ton of time. I, I may not have shared everything. <laughs> Uh, Linda right. Waffey, sorry, also mentioned about um, staffing and like uh, how um, donors will often make these requirements about like chiefs of party and all these qualifications for high level staff um, that don't necessarily fit the context and don't have relevant experience to that, including about Jesse issues. Um, and that can be really frustrating. And how do you address that? That's great. Thank you so much. And I know some folks are uh, having to leave. So I'll just quickly share the screen here with uh, me and R Ryan and I's contact information so that you can uh, remain in touch uh, with us. And we're, we're still here on the line if there's any other you know, points that wanna be brought up or um, additions that you'd like to make in the chat. Oh, and thank you so much. Um, Pebbles put in a link for um, a, a survey on participation in the event today. So any feedback you can provide, we would really appreciate that. And um, I did just wanna say that, you know, Ryan and I will be compiling all of the incredible ideas on the jam boards, um, looking at the notes that our SIG colleagues have been taking to put together some ideas for next steps um, and be in touch uh, with the group. But we do welcome you to reach out to us uh, individually as well. Ryan, did you have anything you wanted to add? I just want to echo everything you said, and I've just really appreciated uh, the conversations today. They were really uh, thorough, thoughtful, and intentional, and I really appreciate this group uh, of like-minded, but very with uh, the intention of being diverse, as Caitlin O'Donnell said. So I uh, really appreciate everyone and us and, and the community we're continuing to build. So um, more than anything, just get loving to get to know all of you. And I look forward to yeah. seeing at the ongoing events over the next year, because look at these faces. Hopefully we'll all be in the room over and over and over again and getting to know each other in more meaningful and intentional ways. So thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks to you. your facilitation. Thank you. Have a great day, uh, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>